This guide is designed to get you editing with DaVinci Resolve as soon as possible. This might just be the leanest DaVinci Resolve tutorial in the world. Start by downloading the latest version of DaVinci Resolve. Open the description of this video and follow the link to the DaVinci Resolve website. The free version is pretty powerful and it offers the majority of the features of the paid version. Open DaVinci Resolve and click on that new project button and then name your project. Click create. DaVinci Resolve is divided into different workspaces and they're kind of arranged in the rough form of a post-production workflow. So we can go from left to right as we work through our project. And we have media, cut, edit, fusion, color, fairlight, and then deliver. So media is for importing your videos. And then we've got two different interfaces for editing, cut and edit. So cut is for kind of quicker edits but it's also a slightly different way of working. I would say that it's designed similar to systems like Final Cut Pro and CapCut. The edit page is more of a traditional interface designed for more complex work, and it's basically the one that most people use. Fusion is for visual effects and motion graphics creation. Color is for color grading and correction. Fairlight is for audio editing and mixing. And Deliver is for finalizing and exporting projects. Now you can actually switch back and forth between all these tabs as you work on your project. And that includes the cut and edit pages. For this video, I'm just gonna talk about the edit page. If you wanna know how to use the cut page, then go to the description of this video now and follow the link to my step-by-step -step guide or use this QR code. Click on the edit tab at the bottom and then click the gear icon to open settings. Set your project resolution and frame rate. For me, I'm just gonna set it to 4K and 30 frames per second, and then click Save. On the left, you should now see a box which says no clips in media pool. And if you don't see that, then click the media pool button on the top left. Make sure all your video and other media are placed in a folder on your hard drive. Drag and drop that folder onto the media pool box. Now you might get a pop-up asking if you want to change the project settings that you just already set. But if you're sure that you set the right project settings, click don't change. All the media in the folder now appears in the media pool and you can add or remove media from the media pool at any time. To get a bigger preview window, click the single viewer mode button top right. Move your mouse over the thumbnail of a video file. Move left and right to preview the clip in the preview window. Double click on a clip to select and open it in the preview window. Click and drag on the slider below the window to scrub through the clip. Drag a video clip onto the timeline below the preview window. The clip on the timeline now appears in the preview window. The timeline is made up of tracks. The video tracks are blue and the audio tracks are green. And this red line is the playhead. Move the slider or the playhead to scrub through the timeline. Use the slider with the plus and minus symbols to zoom in and out of the timeline. Click and drag on the dark lines to the left of the timeline to change the height of the track. And you can actually use this method for other areas within the workspace to rearrange things to suit how you like to work. But if you get into a mess doing this, go to workspace and then reset UI layout. Click and drag to move the clip left and right on the timeline. Drag the clip up and down to switch tracks. To play the timeline, click the play button. But no editor in the world ever does that. Instead, we use the space bar on your keyboard. Click the blade edit mode button above the timeline to change your cursor into a razor blade for cutting. But no editor in the world ever does that. Instead, we press the B key on our keyboard, move the blade to where you want to cut the clip and then click. And now you have two clips on the timeline. To move one of the clips, click the selection mode button above the timeline. But most editors just press the A key on our keyboard. So remember, the two most important editing keys are A and B. Move the first clip and drop it in the middle of the second clip. This creates cut points just like using the blade. Select a clip and press the delete key to delete it. And you can use the command plus Z keys to undo any unwanted changes that you made. By default, the timeline links the audio and video tracks of a clip. And this means that when you select a clip on the timeline, you select both video and audio tracks. 
When you trim, you trim both. To separate video and audio, click the linked selection button above the timeline to separate it. Hover the cursor over the end of a clip. Move the cursor left and right, and you're going to see three different icons. There's a left arrow, a right arrow, and one with two arrows left and right. The left arrow icon is used to trim in. Clicking and dragging with this icon allows you to adjust the start point of the clip. The right arrow icon is used for trim out. Clicking and dragging with this icon allows you to adjust the end point of the clip. The icon with two arrows is used for slip trim. With two clips next to each other, click and drag to adjust the edit point of both clips simultaneously. Hover the cursor over the corner of the video clip. Drag the small white icon left or right to add a fade in or a fade out. Drag and drop your B-roll clip onto the timeline onto the track above the previous clips. To remove the audio track from the B-roll shot, click the linked selection button again above the timeline to disable it. Select the B-roll audio track and then just press delete. Press the spacebar to watch the video and you can see it cut to the B-roll clip on the second track. Find a music track on your computer and then drag it onto the timeline. The music file is automatically added to the media pool window as well and any media files can be dropped directly onto the timeline, just like that. Move the music clip to where you want it on the timeline. All audio files display the waveform in light green, and you can use that to get a rough idea of the audio loudness. Hover the cursor over the thin white line in the middle of the audio track. Drag it up and down to adjust the volume. Right click on the audio track which contains spoken voice. And now choose Normalize Audio Levels from the list. You can choose a preset from another drop-down list, or you can just adjust the peak level to the desired maximum. For YouTube, I'd say choose a number between minus 6 and minus 15 dB. And now adjust the music audio level so that it sits comfortably under the spoken voice level. Hover the cursor over the corner of the audio clip. Drag the small white icon left or right to add a fade in or a fade out. Click the mixer button at the top to open the audio level mixer. You can now use these track faders to adjust your audio track levels. Click the three dots and you can switch to a meter. Play the timeline and use this meter to make sure that your master audio levels are good. If your voice audio isn't compressed already, you will want to level out the audio to make it sound more polished and more professional. Click on the clip with the spoken voice. Click on the Inspector button, select the Audio tab and enable Dialog Leveler. But if you find that you don't get the best result, switch to the Fairlight page. In the Voice Audio channel, click the plus button next to the effect. Locate Limiter or Soft Clipper and then add that to the channel. Each effect has settings that you can play with to adjust the amount of compression on the voice. To add text to your timeline, click on the Effects button at the top of the interface to open the Effects window on the left. Find the title's heading and then click on it to open the title's selector. Hover your cursor over each title and then move left to right to preview it. Choose a title by dragging it onto the timeline. Text overlays appear light brown. And now to edit the text, select it and then click the Inspector button. Type your text into this large box. And below this box you're going to find your settings for font, color, size and plenty more so that you can customize and polish your text. Back in the effects window, select Video Transitions. Like with text presets, you can move your cursor over the transition presets to preview them. Move the playhead to where you want to place the transition so probably at the edit point of two clips. And the preview is going to then use that edit point. Drag your chosen transition and drop it onto the edit point. Place it either at the end of the first clip, on the join of both clips, or at the start of the second clip. Drag the end of the transition to adjust the duration. To delete a transition, just select it and then press the delete key. Now for beginners, you probably don't need to use the fusion page, so I'm going to skip ahead to the color page. The primary color wheels and vector scope are pretty essential tools for color correction. The vector scope helps visualize your color balance. Click the color wheels button to make sure that you can see them. Then click the scopes button on the right and then use the drop down menu to choose vector scope. To correct an incorrect white balance, click the auto balance button. 
and this button automatically corrects the overall color balance as well as the contrast of a video or an image. If you just want to correct the white balance only, click the color picker and then click on a part of the image that should be white. To adjust white balance manually, you can click and drag to adjust the temperature and the tint settings. You can adjust contrast the same way. Pivot is a setting which changes the way the contrast adjustment works. So it's a bit complicated for this tutorial, but put quickly, this setting determines how the dark and bright parts of an image are stretched or narrowed when contrast is applied. Now the mid detail setting is used to basically adjust sharpness. And this adjusts the contrast and definition in the midtones of an image, specifically targeting areas with high edge detail. The color boost setting is kind of similar to the vibrancy setting that you're going to see in common color correction software. So it's not exactly like saturation because saturation increases color intensity uniformly across the image, whereas color boost targets desaturated areas more aggressively. So here we can adjust the shadows, the highlights and the saturation. And these are all basic color adjustment settings that you're probably going to be familiar with. The color wheels can be adjusted in various ways. So let's just quickly go through what each one does. Increasing the lift brightens the shadows, while decreasing it darkens them. This is useful for enhancing or reducing detail in the dark areas without affecting the highlights. Increasing gamma brightens the midtones. Decreasing gamma darkens the midtones. Increasing gain brightens the highlights, while decreasing it, yes, you guessed it, darkens them. And this is useful for controlling the brightness of bright areas without affecting the shadows. Also, is useful for making broad adjustments to the image's overall brightness, but it can lead to clipping in shadows or highlights if you don't use it carefully. So I'll tell you, with all of these controls, you, know, you do have to be careful what you do, don't go crazy with them, just little subtle adjustments until you, you know, get more confident and know what you're doing. So you can adjust each of these using an overall control, or you can adjust the setting for a specific color. So for example, you can reduce the amount of red in the shadows like this. If you get into a mess and you want to reset, right click the node and choose reset node grade. We've already done basic audio mixing, so let's skip the Fairlight page and head straight to the Deliver page for exporting. On the left, we can choose between various export presets. So a good one to start with is the H.264 master setting. Give your file a name, choose a location to save, and then add to the render queue. And then finally, hit Render All, and DaVinci Resolve is going to export your whole timeline as a single video. So if you only want to export a part of your timeline, just use the I and O keys to set in and out points on the timeline first. And then when you export, Resolve is just going to render everything in between these points. Now that you've got the basics down for DaVinci Resolve, you can support the channel by joining us over on Patreon. We've got movie chat going there as well. If you want to chat about movie stuff. And uh, also I've uh, just released this book few months ago smartphone videography beginner to advanced so far pretty much five stars for all the feedback i'm getting but uh if that's something you're interested in head over to amazon all the links will of course be in the description and uh other than that be visionary